Hey guys, what's up? David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Good to be with you again. Finally, great to be home from a lot of traveling, speaking at conferences and working at EAS. Wow, it's nice to be back. I can't tell you how fun it was to meet many of you. So many of you came up to me, introduced yourself, and uh, took some pictures together. It was a fun time. Thanks for letting me know that you watch my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate that a lot. Very humbling to see all of you out at those bee conferences in North Carolina, at the state North Carolina Beekeepers Association meeting, and then at EAS, Eastern Apicultural Society, uh, meeting so many of you there it was so much fun. Today, we're gonna jump into a hive. and In fact, we're gonna jump into the hive where we had the disappearing queen, queen number six zero with the yellow slash green number on her back. Gonna see if she's still in there or gonna see if they just and maybe raised a new one. We'll be looking for any kind of queen cells, but it's time to get in there with you guys. Join me as we take a look. It's already starting to get a little bit uh, drizzly actually. So I put the umbrella up. Always putting the umbrella up makes a big difference, keeping uh, maybe some of the sun off of me and a lot of the rain, if it starts to rain, won't go into the hives as I work them. Sometimes I just have to do that. You can buy these umbrellas at Lowe's, Home Depot, and you can actually get them pretty cheap and you can set them up over some hives that you're about to work. It puts me in the shade and I like that but it also uh, helps me stay out of the rain if it is drizzling a little bit. Now you shouldn't work bees when it's raining or drizzly. Guys like me that are YouTube content creators on beekeeping, um, we just have to keep the content coming. <laughs> so today is the time to get back and do a little videotaping in the beehive. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in there. Hey, if this is your first time for joining me, I appreciate it so much. Please subscribe. We're crossing 94,000. I hope you'll join me. All of us working together, we can make this happen. Zero small hive beetle on the top cover. When I lifted the top cover off, two or three earwigs. And earwigs really don't mean anything at all in the beekeeping uh, spectrum of things. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these frames. What we're looking for is either a queen cell or my number 60 queen. This is a new frame that I, I placed this super on not too long ago. They haven't really drawn any out near the wall there, as you can see. Uh, a little bit of wax drawn out here. Let's go ahead and just set that right there out of our way. That'll give us a little room to manipulate the next frame that we see. Boy, I really did have a good time at North Carolina and at EAS. I spoke uh, a few times there in North Carolina. North Carolina State Beekeepers Association is the largest in the country. I think they said they had 4,500 members. So that was pretty, pretty fun speaking there with my good friend, John Zivishlock. And if you don't know John Zivishlock, he and I have been friends since 2009 when we met at EAS. And we speak together, we, we roll through the country together we do a podcast together sometimes. We wrote a book together on queen rearing that just got translated into Spanish. And so John and I have a lot of fun hanging out together. So we had about a 10 or 11 day event uh, that allowed us a good opportunity to hang out. If you're wondering about my hat and my veil, um, I made this myself. I got a whole video where I showed you how I made this. A lot of you will watch a video and you'll say, David, did you make that? Did you buy it? <laughs> well, I made it. Uh, you'll have to go back in some videos that I've made this year and find the one where I teach you how to make this. I see 100% better wearing this. It's, it's so nice not to have to stare through the black screen. All right, no brood, no sign of any, any queen up in the super. I wanna show you something kind of funny here. I've mentioned to you guys before that we used to manufacture beekeeping equipment like crazy in the, in the days gone by. We don't so much anymore, but look at that. I would always use equipment that maybe was assembled incorrectly. So here's a handle on the inside of this super. You know, it's like the, uh, the barber's kids has to work worse hair and um, I don't know. <laughs> so beekeepers usually have crappy equipment because uh, 
you know, couldn't sell it, so might as well put it to work, right? All right, let's let's uh, let's take this super off, get down to some uh, deep boxes down below and see if we can spot a queen or the making of a queen. So the danger of actually pulling a frame up out of order, like one right out of the middle, I'm in danger of actually killing the queen. If they're making a queen cell, um, replacing the queen that they wouldn't accept on that video, uh, if I just willy-nilly jerk a frame up out of the middle there, I can roll the comb and just demolish uh, a queen cell. The only thing that they have to bank on is probably going to be one, maybe two at the most queen cells on a replacement, emergency replacement. So we're going to have to be careful as we look through this. Leave a comment below, guys, uh, what you think the status of this hive is going to be with them replacing the queen, or will I find queen number six zero maybe they were kind of rough at it with her in the beginning and maybe they kind of said well you know i think i do remember her well this is a deep frame you guys helped me build this on a youtube video and while we were building it uh, we went ahead and painted it blue and now we put it on as a super if you remember both sides it's a frame of honey on this side and a frame of honey on this side but lo and behold, I do see a queen cell. Do you see that queen cell? Mmm. Mmm-hmm. Mmm-hmm. Queen cell alert. I'm going to do some fancy manipulation of this frame and see if I can actually see any larvae inside of there. Let's take a look. Got to get the sun just right. Boy, I'm not seeing a big larvae down in there. Still looking. Mm, it's hard to see with the bees. Mm, it is so hard to tell. Well, it's really hard to tell. It's not real obvious that that queen cup has anything in it. You know, look at that. Another great frame. And I want to show you guys what's on this side because it is a beautiful frame of what is known as bee bread. See the bee bread there? Isn't that amazing? I'll try to hold it back so you can see some light on it. I thought I would see a queen cell down on some of that stuff at the bottom, but you know, I really don't. But I'm going to move the bees off of it a little bit just to make sure there's not some sort of a queen cell around here. Nah, I don't see anything. So does anybody else see one queen cup on this side? Do you see it? Can you find it? I'm teaching you guys to be great beekeepers, aren't I? That's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this frame over to my picnic table where we can actually look at it a little more carefully. Too much rain on the picnic table, as you can see it hitting the sidewalk here. I got the frame inside uh, under the roof a little bit better here. You can see a queen cup right here. Hard to see that there's much going on in there. So let's go ahead and just look at these other things here. Uh, not much of a queen cell there because that's just a blob. Here's a queen, here's a queen cup right here. Do you see that? So let's see if we can look down in there. Let's go through here, see what else we find. That's a dried little cup there. Not much else. All right, I don't see anything in that one. And you know, I raise queens, so if there's a queen in there and I don't see her, like a virgin queen getting mated, I don't even see a torn down uh, or deserted queen cup or queen cell. There's just not much going on in the way of the queen life. Okay, it's not looking good, is it? We've been pounding away at these frames, trying to find eggs maybe, which I think is impossible, but trying to find queen cups, queen cells, maybe the queen, and it's not turning out very good. This is one of those examples where a colony fails to raise a queen. Something went wrong. It's not gonna happen. The only way this hive is gonna have a queen now is if we introduce one because they don't have any eggs to raise one from. Now I could take a frame of eggs, introduce it, but that's gonna to take too long. So I'm gonna pull a, a mated queen from one of the, my mating nucleuses out there. It's gonna make up some queen candy real quick here. 
All it takes is some powdered sugar. Uh, you can use always use a marshmallow if you don't have access or time to want to make some clean candy. But it just takes a little bit of water and then you mix in this powdered sugar. So just keep adding your powdered sugar and add a little water if it gets too dry. You want to have the consistency of something like a little bit drier than Play-Doh. So once you have this, this is just a, one little ball of, of queen candy that you can use in queen cages. Now once you get it to the consistency that you like it, you want to take your queen cage like this and just poke it down into the candy and twist it and that's filling up the tube. And you don't need a lot. I'm going to go about like that. A little, not quite the whole tube. And so then that's, that's all the candy that I need. See all the beads that are surrounding her? That's a retinue. And they're taking care of her, cleaning her, feeding her. She's not really moving that much. She's resting right under my finger here. You might be able to see her moving. And so once I pick her up by her wings like this, well, you can see I have a hold of her now. I don't want to put any attendance with her. I've been thinking about using attendance. We're just going to put her in there just like that. To make it easier on myself, I'm just going to put the queen here in the top. There's plenty of bees up here to take care of her and to help release her. And we don't really want to hang it upside down after we did our last experiment. I like to hang it more sideways. So to hang it sideways, I'm going to strategically place uh, my little pen through like this. Uh, I want to hang it a little deeper than just at the wood, so I'm going to make a little curve in it. Uh, about right here. Bees are pretty excited to see her, it looks like. Alright, so now if I let it drop, I want to kind of keep it angled up a little bit, like this. Well, as you can see, here is the queen cage. It's pointing up and they're already starting to eat on it, but I want it to point, I want it to get down a little bit deeper. That's actually not bad, I like that. Okay, so how long should I wait until we go back and see if that queen is out of her cage? How about we wait um, five days? That'd be fun just to see how far along things are in five days and if she's out and maybe we can spot her walking around. So five days, I'll make another video. You wanna join me and see how things are progressing. Hey, look at this. Do you recognize this? A few videos back, I made a video about this hammer being my beloved hammer that I've built thousands of beehive boxes with. It's amazing because a subscriber to my channel that watches my videos saw me talk about how I wanted to chrome plate this hammer. He actually took this hammer, it's not chrome plated, but look at that, how he polished it so beautifully. Wow, that is incredible. And he also asked for the other one, and it is equally beautiful. Look at that. And I don't know why, but it looks like he just gave me a hammer, because I don't remember giving him this one. <laughs> but uh, so his name is Richard Cole and we actually worked together many years ago. Was it back in the 70s, I think. And uh, so I haven't seen him for a long time. Richard, thank you so much. I really appreciate these hammers and the great job you did. Man, I'm gonna cherish uh, the one that I love so much. It, it looks chrome plated. And so I, I like that a lot. Thanks a lot, Richard. So many of you are so excited about the Winter Bee Kinds that went on sale August the 1st. They ship out in December when the weather gets cooler. These are Winter Bee Kinds. These are boards with my special recipe. And got... It's a little noisy. Wow, they are eating through it, aren't they? Special insulation, ventilation, helps your bees get through the winter. I documented their use for, for many, many years now. And last winter, I documented so many different hives with those on it and how big they were coming out 
of uh, a harsh winter here in central Illinois and uh, really did well. They were, I split some of my hives three times. Thousands of customers throughout the U.S. have placed these and used these and love these on their hive to help their bees get through the winter. So if you're interested in ordering these, you've got to do it fast. We always sell out. And so you need to go to our website. I'll leave a link down below in the description where you can order these winter bee kinds. Check it out. If you're not sure about them, man, eh, you know, just watch my videos. Now, I know some of you like my personality style and teaching, and I really appreciate that. And if you haven't taken one of my online courses, it's just like this, me and you chatting, me teaching you uh, about bees. And I really hope you will do that. Uh, it helps me a lot when you order my online courses and uh, you'll learn, um, about everything you need to know about beekeeping. So I have online courses like the basic beekeeping course, how to get your bees through the winter. That's a good one coming up really soon that you need to watch. And I have one about spring management, how to raise queens, a day in the apiary with David. I have an advanced course that gets more into pests and diseases. I've got an ultimate course that kind of covers them all. So it's a lot of online study that if you want to do that, and it's just me teaching you. So uh, if you like my style, this will really be good for you. If you don't like my style, well, learn to like it. <laughs> well, since I wore my famous hat and veil today with a see-through plastic window in it, I'm gonna direct you to see that video so you can make one yourself. Look at this video right here. This is how I walk through it step-by-step. Step. Very easy, piece of plastic, little bit of silicone. Now you can see better. I'll see you over there.